Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for a super special video. So this weekend is Pro Tour Dominaria, so for the next three days, today, tomorrow, and Sunday, we are going to have video wrap-ups talking about all the action from the Pro Tour. So this is Pro Tour Dominaria Day 1 wrap-up, and today we got some things to talk about. Going to be a little bit different as we move through the three days of coverage. So today, we're going to be focusing on the Day 1 metagame, also, whatever decks we happen to get, the way the Pro Tour works, you don't just get all the decks. They don't publish them all on day one. You got to wait till Sunday usually to really get the deck list. But we do get some deck tacks and some lists here and there. So we'll talk about the cool lists that do show up today. And then we'll have more decks in the future. And then we will talk about the cards, some of the top cards from the day at Pro Tour Dominaria. So that's the plan for today, which means we should probably kick it off. So let's jump into the day one metagame from Pro Tour Dominaria, and it's not all that spicy. In all honesty, it's a pretty tame Pro Tour. The most popular decks are all decks that you will know if you keep up on Standard, play Magic Online, play tournaments, whatever. There is a little bit of spice, especially way down at the bottom of the rankings, but this is one of the side effects, I think, of having the Pro Tour be way later than the set release. Like, it used to be that the Pro Tour had happened two weeks after the set release, which meant no one really knew what was good or what was going on, so we had a lot of crazy stuff happening. Now, with the Pro Tour six weeks ahead, the metagame's already kind of set, and we see that reflected in the day one metagame numbers. So, if you just look at the big decks, Red Black Aggro, Red Black Midrange, Mono Red Aggro, Steel Leaf Stompy, which is Mono Green Stompy, essentially, sometimes Splashing, Green Black Constrictor, a various White Black uh, History of Benalia, type decks, some blue-white control decks. They're kind of the decks that you probably know from standard. So I will say the scariest thing about these numbers is the way Wizards broke them up make them look a little bit better than they actually are. So apparently Red Black Aggro and Red Black Midrange are actually the same deck, like one card different maybe, but they're the same deck. Wizards wanted to kind of like make sure the numbers didn't look too crazy. So in reality, Red Black aggro is like 26 and a half percent of the metagame more than one out of every four decks and if you throw mono red in there which isn't the exact same deck red black does get like unlicensed disintegration for example but if you throw mono red in there it brings red aggro up to like 36 point something percent of the metagame so that is the deck the deck of pro tour dominant area red aggro red black aggro it's basically the same idea play your aggressive red stuff kill your opponent maybe your splash maybe you're not so that's number one then number two is actually blue white control so it doesn't appear as number two on our list but if you look on our list of the most played decks in the format you got blue white to fairy control you got blue white control you got blue white approach yes those decks are all slightly different they split up blue white control and blue white to fairy the to fairy deck apparently means you don't have a win condition except for to fairy blue white control means yes you're playing to fairy and that's maybe one of your primary win conditions, but you have at least like a Torrential Gear Hulk or some other way of closing out the game. If you jam all those together, control is actually like 15% blue-white control, closer to like 15% of the metagame, especially if you throw Esper in there as well. So that's kind of number two. And then we get to the different decks. Steel Leaf Stompy, Mono Green Aggro, basically the number third deck, but it's way behind the rest. Like there's twice as many blue-white control decks, and there's four or five times as many red or red black aggro decks is steel leaf stompy and then we got black green constrictors blue white banalias all the other stuff kind of bringing up the bottom of the list if you actually want to see some spice you gotta dig down a little bit coming in at like three percent two percent of the meta we have a blue green karn deck which i know it's karn karn isn't exactly a spicy card but it is a pretty sweet deck uh featuring some weird artifact synergies glitness cranes some vehicles some verderous gear hulks so that's kind of a new-ish thing. Then we have Mono Black Control on the list, and if you go way, way down to the bottom of the list, where you have the decks that only 
only like one, two, three players are playing, that's where you find some semi-interesting stuff. You find White Black Knight Tribal, for example, Mono Red Flame of the Cow, the Blue Black Marari Conjecture deck. So there's some crazy stuff down at the bottom. Whether or not any of that stuff is going to be good enough to show up on camera and actually make its presence felt, that remains to be seen. But... That's kind of the day one metagame. It is not very spicy. It is heavily dominated by red, followed by blue-white control decks, followed by green beatdown decks, basically. Green-black constrictor and the mono-green stompy list. And that makes up a massive percent. Those three decks are 60-something percent, I think, of the meta, if you kind of lump all the various builds together. So that's pretty much what we're working with, and that's pretty much what the metagame looked like heading into Pro Tour Dominaria, with red-black aggro, blue-white control, uh, mono-red aggro, green-black constrictor being near the top, maybe the surprise of the bunch is mono green stompy is it was a real deck it was even a real tier one or tier 1.5 deck but it emerging to be a legitimate like top three deck at pro tour diamond area means that maybe we're underrating that deck a little bit but overall not the spiciest pro tour meta game we've ever seen all right, so now that we've talked about the day one metagame, let's look at a few of the specific decks. So on day one of a Pro Tour, decks are really weird. Wizards hasn't published all the lists yet, so we see bits and pieces of decks on camera, obviously, but we also have a few decks where we actually know the list from a few deck decks. So we have four decks that we actually officially have confirmed, and those are the four decks we're going to look at briefly today, and I pretty much ordered them from spiciest to least spicy, so we're kicking things off with with one of the breakout decks, at least as far as heavily played decks, at Pro Tour Dominaria, and that is Blue Green Karn. And this build was deck tech by Luis Scott Vargas, so Luis and some of his teammates are playing it. I think there's 11 players overall on Blue Green Karn, and the idea of the deck according to LSV, was just to build the best Karn deck possible. So we have tons of artifacts to support Karn. We got Lana War Elves to ramp into Karn. We got some sweet artifact synergies where we have things like Scrap Trawler to get back Walking Ballista when we sack an Implement of Ferocity to put a counter on our Scrap Trawler. All these artifacts also make the constructs of Karn really powerful. And that's one of the things that LSV talked about is not so much playing Karn to just tick up, tick up, tick up, tick up, but to play Karn to tick down, tick down, make two really huge threats is a four mana that makes, let's say a four, four, and then a five, five. That is an insane card. And then you still have a Karn left over to start ticking up with. So blue green Karn, super spicy. And one of the really unique, or at least fairly unique decks that we saw on camera day one of Pro Tour Dominaria coming in at number two on our deck list is a deck that we didn't see on camera but i am unreasonably excited about showing up at pro tour diamond area they called it mono red flame it's basically a slightly updated not quite as budget friendly version of our flaming wizard bird it's the same deck all the one drops of course they have goblin char whirler they also have hazareth the fervent expensive cards that we didn't play in our ultra budget deck but it's the same idea all the burn spells lightning strikes wizards lightning shocks all the one drops get you lava runner bomb at courier soul scar mage and you just beat down beat down play flame account to refill your hand then you're able to double up damage and do all these crazy things and as they were talking about the deck one of the things they pointed out is then the standard format chain whirler and the aggro decks got so good that people started going a little bit bigger to try to not get beat by Chain Whirler, playing less 1-drops, playing less X1 creatures, and because the format started going bigger and bigger, a deck like Mono Red Flame, or Flaming Wizard Bird, is able to potentially get in early and sneak under the decks that have went a little bit too big, and we know from experience on Budget Magic, when you get a good draw with this deck, it is incredibly explosive and can offer tons of damage super, super quickly. We also got to see Esper Banalia, which is 
not super crazy, but it's kind of a neat hybrid. It's kind of a cross between the white-black vehicle deck and almost like a Esper blue-white historic deck to some extent. We have the Knights, we got the Karns, we got the Gideons, but we also have things like Hostage Taker and Scarab God to go along with the vehicle-y package that we've seen in black-white vehicles. So it's kind of a unique take walking the line between kind of like blue-black mid-range, a white-black night heavy vehicle deck and then of course Karns and Gideons as well so while not revolutionary it is a really cool mashup so if you have one of these deck white black vehicles blue black mid-range maybe consider smashing it all together and see what happens because the deck has a ton of powerful cards and looks really really sweet finally our last deck today blue white control Boo! This build of blue-white control, it actually has a win condition, so credit there. I think there were basically three different builds of blue-white control that were all fairly popular. Some approach to the second sun builds, some just Teferi as your win condition. Put Teferi back in your deck over and over and over again until your opponent mills out builds. This is kind of the torrential gear hulk. You can actually kill your opponent with a creature once you gain control of the game build. So you can close out the game a little bit faster. Of course, if that goes wrong, you can still win with Teferi's on the mill out plan blue white control one of the two big archetypes red black slash red aggro number one blue white control number two then we get to all the other stuff below so while certainly not revolutionary i mean this looks almost exactly like a blue white control deck that you would have seen over the past month on magic online at your fnm wherever worth mentioning that it's still out there and it's still very heavily played and definitely going to be worth keeping an eye on where blue white control ends up after tomorrow and then finally sunday with the top eight because this could definitely be a deck that really breaks out and puts multiple people in the top eight just based on how many people were playing it on day one so now the decks are out of the way let's wrap up our discussion today by talking about the breakout cards the five top cards from day one at pro tour dominaria and we're starting off with a wild card and it's probably unfair to consider this a top five card in the same way the other four cards were are just like ultra staples that have been on camera like crazy all day every day but i want to give number five to sorceress spyglass for one specific reason and that is it started to show up in main decks and now this is a little bit cheating it's showing up in main decks of some karn decks where it has extra synergy of course the downside of sorcerer's spyglass in, in some matchups it really doesn't do much of anything but if you're playing karn at least it's doing something it's an artifact to pump your construct so it does a little bit of something in a karn deck however sorcerer's spyglass showing up in main decks because it's a great way to fight against opposing planeswalkers to fight against opposing heart of cure and cards like Teferi, cards like Heart of Kirin, cards like Chandra, cards like Karn even, although you don't want to name Sorcerer's Spyglass on Karn if you're playing Karn in your own deck, but those cards are really popular, and I get asked all the time, what do I do to beat these Planeswalkers, and Sorcerer's Spyglass has moved from unplayed into sideboard staple, and now, at least at some decks at Pro Tour Dominaria, into the main deck as a way to shut off the powerful Planeswalkers and vehicles that are dominating the format, which brings it in at number five on our list. Moving on to number four on our list, we got a classic back from the very earliest days of Magic, and it's only fitting that Lana War Elves, all the way from Alpha, coming back 25 years later in Dominaria, is on our top five card list at number four. So Lana War Elves is showing up in a lot of different decks. It's showing up as the heart and soul of the Steel Leaf Stompy deck. I don't think that deck would exist, or at least it would be much, much worse if you didn't have the ability to play Llanowar on turn 1 into Steel Leaf Champion on turn 2, it is a key part of the blue-green Karn deck. I don't think you would be playing blue-green Karn over some of the other colors if it wasn't for Llanowar Elves accelerating you into your, your Karns a turn earlier. Windy Constrictor decks are still near the top of the format, although they haven't been on camera much, but they are near the top of the metagame as far as just the number of decks that are being played, and Llanowar Elves is right at home there as well, even though 
know, of course, Winding Constrictor decks would exist without it, but the combination of play in all these different decks and being so good and so important that it is basically enabling decks like Steel Leaf Stompy and Blue Green Karn all on its own brings Llanowar Elves in at number four on our list. Moving on to number three on our list, we got the Karn himself, Karn Sion of Urza, and Karn has been kind of all over at Pro Tour Dominaria. You never know where Karn is going to show up. Of course, it shows up in like the Blue Green Karn list, which is the most played, I guess, new deck or kind of rogue deck at Pro Tour Dominaria. It shows up in the Black White Knight slash Historic slash Vehicle, whatever you want to call that deck with uh, Heart of Kirins and History of Benalias and some random knights and cards. And then it shows up in just random decks as well. You never know when it will show up in the sideboards of Red Black Aggro decks, of Mono Black Control decks, of Blue White Control decks. The fact that Karn just goes everywhere brings it in at number three on our list. Moving on to number two on our list, we got another Planeswalker, Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. And Teferi at Pro Tour Dominaria is basically in one type of deck, blue-white or blue-white based at least control decks. Some splash into Jeskai, some splash into Esper, but blue-white X control. And Teferi is the key card in those decks. They said in the metagame breakdown that over 90 decks at Pro Tour Dominaria are playing Teferi Hero of Dominaria. When you consider there's a little over 400 decks total at Pro Tour Dominaria, that means close to somewhere around 20% of the decks at Pro Tour Dominaria are playing Teferi. And that is pretty amazing Consider this, considering this is a two-color Planeswalker. It's not like Karn. If you heard 20% of decks were playing Karn, you'd be like, all right, sure, it's colorless. You can play it anywhere like Smuggler's Copter. Teferi takes two different colors, so it's putting a very specific requirement on your deck. And the fact that 20%-ish of decks are finding it worth paying those two colors of mana to have Teferi Hero of Dominaria brings it in on number two in our list, and that doesn't even include the fact that I believe the most popular build of Blue-White Control at Pro Tour Dominaria is the build that only has Teferi as a win condition, where your only way to win the game is by eventually ultimating a Teferi and exiling all your opponent's stuff, and then using Teferi to put himself back in your own deck over and over again until your opponent mills out. So the fact that Teferi can be the win condition and the card draw engine, and the removal spell, and the best card in your deck in many different types of blue-white X-Control definitely means it's deserving of a spot on our list. Number one on our list, from day one at Pro Tour Diamond Area, of course, Goblin Chain Whirler showing up in more than 35% of the decks. I was shocked that Teferi was in 20% of the decks. Goblin Chain Whirler has maybe even a more restrictive mana cost. Three red mana, red, red, red. That is a tough mana cost to cast, and to find more than 35%, more than one out of every three decks playing Goblin Chain Whirler, pretty amazing. And not only is Goblin Chain Whirler in a lot of decks, it also warps the format around it. One of the big debates you're having, and a big debate that's taking place on Twitter between Wizards labeling the number one deck in the format Black Red Aggro, the number two Black Red Midrange, it's all about Goblin Chain Whirler, because the question is whether decks that are cutting some X ones to play bigger things that don't got, die to Goblin Chain Whirler. Does that make the deck an entirely different deck? And people are fighting on Twitter about it. And that's all because of the power of Goblin Chain Whirler having a good body, a first striking body, and also just wrathing away small creatures. So that brings it in at number one on our list. Anyway, I think that brings us to the end of our wrap up of day one of Pro Tour Dominaria. We've talked about the metagame, we've talked about the decks, we've talked about the cards so did you watch day one at pro tour dominaria what was your impression oh i did want to say on the way out the door shout out to wizards i feel like they've really taken steps forward with the coverage they were doing some cool zoom in stuff with the cameras they had good pieces between rounds they changed up the slides a little bit so they were a little more interesting not as boring so overall good job on coverage by wizards today as well but let me know what you think what else stood out to you what cards are on your top five list what are we looking for tomorrow as we finally get more real deck lists, is there any hope for a spicy deck creeping up and sneaking into the top eight as we work through the day tomorrow? Or are we just going to be seeing Karns into Fairies and Llanowar Elves and the same old stuff that we were seeing today? Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. 
And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.